Hi everyone, although my interests are mostly typewriter oriented, I'm also a huge fan of other fully mechanical things. So when this little device popped up near me for 15 euros, I could not resist. And if you buy typewriters and other old mechanical stuff, you know what happens when you've bought one. An even better one will suddenly pop up. So now I have two of them. They are mostly the same and function roughly the same as well. But this one has obviously seen some more use. The original one did not come with a manual, so I turned to the internet. A bit of browsing the interwebs landed me a Dutch manual for the basic adding and subtracting information. My search also taught me these types of devices stem from around 1960. Because they are pressure fit, I won't be taking them apart. This is the result row. And these columns are used to enter the correct values with the stylus. One side of the stylus is for use with the device. The other side contains a pencil for jotting down your results. You'll also notice the colored bands. These are there to help you visualize hundreds and tens, or cents when doing counting, units, tens, hundreds, thousands, and so forth. The very basic thing to remember is that when a number is in a silver or blank field, you need to move the row all the way down when starting at that number. If the gap is in a red field, you need to move the row all the way up and carry it over. There's even an autocorrect feature. If you happen to move it in the wrong direction, you'll see an arrow in the result row telling you to move in the opposite direction without lifting the stylus out of the hole. The manual tells you that you need to add numbers the way you write them from left to right. That sometimes causes this to happen. When you get a red arrow pointing upwards, you just move the entire row upwards starting from the zero position. This doesn't occur when you add numbers from right to left. And that will be the way I will demonstrate the device. So let's say I want to add 76.03 to 724.82. I'll put in 724.82 first. Everything is set to zero and all input fields are blank, so I need to move them all down. Next, I'll add 76.03. 3 needs to be moved down. 0 is easy, I don't need to do anything. 6 is in a red field, so that needs to be moved up and 1 carried over. The same happens with 7, and the result is this naughty number. I've said that it can also subtract numbers. To do so, you just need to flip the device over. You'll see that the same naughty number is present in the result row. I'll subtract another quote, bad, unquote, number, 666. The rightmost 6 is in the red, so I'll move that up. A red arrow upwards appears. I need to move the entire row up starting at a 0. Then, I suspect the 6 by moving the blank section down. The final 6 is in a blank section as well, so down it goes. And that gives the result. Rather mundane, 135.85. A good calculator has a reset button, and this one has that as well. When you are done, or when you want to start a new calculation, you pull the handle and the result row is set back to zero. The bottom of the Dutch manual I had found mentioned that the device could also be used for multiplication with the use of special tables. I started looking for them, hoping some other collector might have scanned them. That wasn't the case. But it is how I ended up finding this second device. It came in a fancy leather-like holder, the machine on the right side and the coveted tables on the left side. You don't need to buy these tables, you can easily recreate them yourself in for example Excel or another spreadsheet program if you desire to have them. But in those days the tiny electronic calculators, smartphones and computers we have today didn't exist or weren't available to the general public. So you needed smart ways to avoid doing all your calculations by hand or from the top of your head. And that's why these tabulated books were sold as well, with a manual on how to use them. Every set, numbered from 1 to 99, has the base number in the top left corner and every instance of that number in the hundreds. In the green N column, you could find the multiplication factor. 
So these tables contain all numbers from 1 times 2 to 99 times 999. After tab 99, we can also find tabulated values for powers, roots, logarithms, and values for products with pi, for numbers from 1 to 1000. And the last page is a table that allows you to calculate how much you need to add to what you paid for an item to make x% percent profit. Apparently, it wasn't allowed to make less than 5% profit or more than 60% profit. Let's say I want to know what 5339 times 15 is. I'll go to the 15 tab and look up 15 times 39. On the same page, I can find 53 times 15. Now I just need to add these two numbers on the Adimult in the following manner. First, I'll input the 585, and then two digits to the left, I need to enter 795. And there's that naughty number again. These tables can also be used for division. Since I'm very predictable, let's find out what 80,085 divided by 666 is. On the 66 page, you'll need to look for the number that's just smaller than 80,085 in the 666 column. Well, looks like it isn't there. I could go for the 99 number, but since 10 folds are easier to work with when adding things further down the line, I'll just remember 90 and subtract 59,940 from 80,085. That's 20,145. Now I'm looking for a number that's just smaller than that. And that number is 19,980, or 30 times 666. Now I know that the number before the decimal point is 90 plus 30, which is 120. But what about the numbers behind the decimal point? When I subtract 19,980 from 20,145, I end up with 165. I'll add two imaginary zeros and look for the nearest number to 16,500 in the 666 column. That's 15,984 or 24 times 666. So the first two digits behind the decimal point are 24. And you could go on quite a bit this way if you want to know more numbers behind the decimal point. But I'm pretty sure this video is getting a bit boring, so I'll let you try that by yourself. One last thing. These two devices aren't completely the same. This one is a Saldor version. It allows you to calculate negative numbers on the subtraction side in this bottom result row. For example, 666 minus 80,085 becomes minus 79,419. When you spot one of these for cheap, consider buying it, because these mechanical things are pretty fun too, at least in my opinion. Feel free to leave your favorite naughty numbers in the comment section. If I find another mechanical calculator, I might use them in my next video. Have a nice day!